Hello again and welcome to another edition of The Brattlecast. It's about books, old, rare, and out of print, and a whole lot more, too, because we have Ken Gloss here from the Brattle Bookshop in Boston, world-renowned, and a famous, famous spot uh, for me. I love to wander over there and look at the bargain bin on the outside, and I sometimes even get inside. But anyway, Ken, it's great to see you as always. It's always fun, and uh, and when you were saying we were talking about appraisals, trends, what are things worth, why have things gone up, what has gone down, people are asking me that type of question. I've gotten a few people writing in and saying, sure. what is the trend? So uh, before we talk about the current trends, um, how does it work? I mean, is it like, does it follow the root of the economy? Does it follow the root of pop culture? Uh, it It's all and none of the, the above because um, – a lot of it, yes, pop culture can happen. A movie comes out. I mean, a movie like The Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz books, and there's a whole series of them, are very valuable, particularly The Wizard of Oz. If that movie had never come out yeah. with Judy Garland, I mean, there were other versions, but it wasn't good. Nobody would know The Wizard of Oz or uh, Gone with the Wind. Uh, that wouldn't, nobody would really, I mean, it's a good book. They'd ask for it. They'd be collectible. But yes, sometimes the fact that there's some major event that sticks in your mind, that keeps it sticking. Uh, sometimes things can go up on a trend like Kennedy, when he was first assassinated, when he was assassinated. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the value of his things went way up because everybody was talking and, and obviously uh, there was a limit. But then it slowly got forgotten about, went down. Now it's going back up again. But this is over, what, 50, 60 years. Right. And it's going up now because he's looked at more of a historical figure. It went up initially because it was an emotional spike. Well, to keep it local, when the Red Sox finally won in 2004, after a very long drought after the curse of the Bambino, a lot of interest came back to uh, to Red Sox Red, right? A lot of interest came back, but it's interesting. And sometimes when something like that happens, a lot of that isn't terribly valuable now. And the reason it isn't is they put out so much. I mean, the minute they won, they were putting out millions of copies of celebration and victory. So going back on it now, it's uh, they're not quite as valuable. Uh, although in my bathroom... I have two tickets framed of Game 6 of the World Series from uh, the 2013, which my wife and I were lucky to go at. Every day when I look at it, uh, you know, I it, it brings back that sure, memory. Sure. Also, we went to the Game five, 5 against Detroit where Ortiz hit that Grand Slam home run where the fielder flipped over the oh, uh, yes, dugout, yes, the yes, yes. policeman. Uh, and I've been – someone has a signed picture of that that I've been trying to get to from them for years, but they like it too. So sometimes events happen, but just so much is put out so fast, right. it's not as, as valuable. But th there are trends. One of the things that's gone way down in value is books that you buy because you want the knowledge. I mean, it, it's I hate to say it that way, but nobody buys a dictionary. No. They don't buy encyclopedias. No, no. Art books are off – for the, per, for the person who just wants to see the pictures because you can get them all on your camera. So the Internet also has dropped a lot of prices. It, that's a trend over the last 20 or so years because a lot of books you thought were incredibly rare, you know, that there aren't copies around. It turns out there were plenty of copies, just that it was really inefficient finding them. Now with the Internet, you find them easy, easier. So a lot of those have tended to gone down. Demographics play a lot in it. Uh, a person who grew up uh, reading the Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew, maybe even a little bit before Horatio Alger, they used to collect those things and pay huge prices for them. But the new collectors now who are in their 30s and 40s, they didn't read Nancy Drew. They didn't read Horatio Alger, but they might have read Harry Potter. And uh, one Harry Potter first edition of the English edition went for over $400,000. Now, one of the trends that is happening is if a book is really unique and really rare, 
in a very important book. And if you're a collector, it's maybe the once in, or twice in a lifetime you're going to have the opportunity. Book collecting is relatively cheap. I mean, even people who spend thousands or tens of thousands, even hundred, compared to buying a Picasso, which could go for a hundred million, it's cheap. So a person who has ten, twenty, fifty, a hundred million dollars, if it's what they want, whether it's a thousand, five thousand, fifty thousand, it doesn't make that much difference to them. It's not going to change their life. And because of the stock market. And many entrepreneurs getting very, very rich, the absolute best copy of almost anything, the one that's really gone after, will shoot through the roof. But the secondary trend on that is if you have to say but. In other words, this is a great copy, mm. but there's a little stain. If you, I mean, even if you almost have to get a magnifying glass out to look at that stain – then that person who will spend the limit goes, no, I, I want the prestige. I want to be able to show off better than anybody else. I'll wait to buy that really great one. So I know that we deal and you deal in used and old books and so forth. But in general, if a movie comes out, and let's bring it up to date, uh, Oppenheimer, okay, a huge film, big success. In the mainstream bookstores where new books are found – I would imagine a lot of people are rushing to find the latest biography or the biography that the movie was based on. Uh, so is that the case? Well, it's definitely the case. But see, me being a little bit different is I wanted to read the book. And I said, you know, I'll get one of these in soon because they're selling <laughs> so many new ones. It came in yesterday. Oh, my goodness. So I'm going to start reading it tomorrow. Yeah. So I tend to wait. But what happens with something like Oppenheimer or Bobby – Mm. Uh, which are very popular movies this year. There is a spike in the new books. They're bestsellers. Right. They s go, but once a bestseller is six months out, eight months out, there are millions of copies. They they sort of drop back to normal. Uh, but there are subjects that also have gone down. Uh, Victorian, the the books that were, uh, you know, sort of these beautiful colored books or. Dickens, Thoreau, well, Thoreau stays uh, Price's Keeper, but a lot of like Oliver Wendell Holmes, mm -hmm. John Green, Luke Greenleaf, Whittier. 18, uh, mid 1800s. Mid a, a lot of them that were very popular in their day or that everybody read when they went to school are not the same books no. that everybody's reading. Uh, matter of fact, I was talking to a colleague of mine who sells very expensive, rare, beautiful books. He has a great business. He said someone – he works out of a townhouse in New York. Someone came up because they saw his name listed in a bookseller list, didn't realize it wasn't a big regular open store, but came in. He was from Wall Street. He was in his 30, maybe 40 years old, obviously very successful on Wall Street. And my friend and colleague started pulling out some books here, books here, some of his better stock. And the man after about a half an hour said, no, that looks more like my father's books, not mine. <laughs> so he realized what he needed to come up with was maybe books from the 1950s, 60s, 70s, even the 2000s, maybe things on space travel or exploration, on computer technology, on Apple, uh, you know, some of the earliest things. So, again, generational changes makes a big difference. Uh, but there are some fields that people – that are coming up that people, maybe because they're in the news, uh, culture, culturally, mm -hmm. books by blacks, black authors, black, uh, there's a lot, much larger black middle class now, some of whom are do, doing very well, and books signed by almost anybody who is Afro-American uh, has gone up. There was one of the very first books of poetry written in the United States was by a woman named Phyllis Wheatley. There was recently a copy coming up at auction. It was signed by her, expecting to get about $20,000. That's a lot of money. Good. It went for $75,000. Yeah. The, uh, the, the, uh, another area is science that has gone up tremendously because a lot of the money that people have been making is the high tech the high tech people, and they want the the foundations of science, mathematic, uh, mathematics. Uh, so that's an area that's going to in space travel. I mean, space travel to 
us in many ways is like Columbus going out to the New World or Magellan circumnavigating because that was to parts unknown. Or if you look at the old, old maps, where there be dragons sort of off the edge mm. of the world. But for us, space travel is that great exploration. Uh, all the people who've watched Star Trek or Star Wars, it really gets, it really gets ingrained. Another area that's really trending up lately is romance. Romance novels from the 19th century, early 20th century, because women are collecting books a lot more. They, they've got more wealth because they work. Of course, a lot of, a lot of them, it's an issue of they don't have time. But And when they do get it, the older romance novels is a totally underpriced, undercollected area that in the last five or six years has really sort of changed. There have been few bo books written about collecting romance novels, so it gives people an idea or a key of what to look for, and they've gone up tremendously. When I was talking about I, lifestyles, uh, gay literature has just gone through the roof, or any of the social movements, mm. uh, yeah, really anything of Stonewall. We had a... Um, a guide to New York City, a gay guide to New York City in 1962 or three. It was very small, but in 1980, 90, you have got that. I might even have put it out with our dollar pamphlets. It went for almost four thousand dollars. So wow. Th but that, but at the same time, a first edition of Thackeray. Most people who in collecting now would go, who's Thackeray? What about, you said science. What about science fiction? Is there any trend? Oh, science fiction is, is uh, well, yes, there is a trend. Science fiction is very popular. People love reading it. But is, is Tarzan science fiction? Uh. And, and, of course, the, the whole image of the, the white man conquering the jungles with the natives there— that's not so popular no, anymore. No, no, no. It's, it's it's not so, PC as it was back in 1912. Right. So that also sometimes the attitude can change. Uh, a major, major collectible person was Lindbergh. Uh, he was, you know, when he made his flight across the ocean and so on. But so much has come out about him favoring the Nazis, uh, being anti-Semitic. Uh, a lot of his character wasn't known that's come out, and yeah. therefore the collecting area. Confederates, mm. uh, that was an area, too, where people would— the books were selling very well about the war, but a lot of that, like Robert E. Lee material, still gets money, but it's come way, way down because especially in most of the country, you don't want to have big displays of Robert E. Lee or maybe a we, Confederate we, we, battle flag. We've seen the statues come down, so we've it, seen it the makes statues, sense. That but it also makes... So the way society looks at a person and looks at can change what what is coming. Also, when an area of collecting gets very popular, which means a lot of people are looking for it, and that's supply and demand. Well, uh, in supply and demand, the prices go up and up and up and up. Therefore, if you're just starting out, you might say, well, what can I collect that I'd like that isn't as expensive because I can't afford it? That's where the trend in romance novels has gone, gone tremendously. Now, what's, what's happening, those are starting to get very expensive, so somebody will start looking in another area or field. Uh, but... That's sort of how it goes, and it's uh, what you grew up with, what your education was, how you look at times now, things on uh, the environment, Silent Spring, uh, the double helix in science. They've gone way up, but, you know, they're not that old, so— Interesting uh, look at not just the books themselves, but about civilization and culture. And one thing that I can say that happens is— Sometimes an older collector who has bought something and comes in and is offering it to us and we don't give them the price they want, they go, but this was a very, very famous book. Uh, this had so-and-so's signature and this had – and sometimes you have to very nicely explain to them 
Yeah, that was what your generation was interested in. Your generation is the one that's selling. It's not necessarily the next generation. It's the free market, and you have to respect it because that's how we operate here. Fascinating as always, my friend. And, of course, uh, the Brattlecast is something that has been very, very alive and well since just before the pandemic. And if people have questions, they can certainly contact you through the website and uh, ask us to do a uh, a particular topic. I'd be happy to do that. Or if they have questions about books, I'm always like, I always enjoy talking about them. Absolutely. He's Ken Gloss. I'm Jordan Rich. You've been listening to The Brattlecast. 